Hello and welcome back to The Raid Room. And today we want to discuss, do people actually sodding want AI in their NAS? Let's face it, NAS, along with pretty much every other area of the tech industry right now, is chasing behind the fad, the buzzword, the collateral, the oomph that is AI marketing. And pretty much every single NAS brand I talk about, barring I would say true as an unraid. Pretty much everyone else has discussed AI to a greater or lesser degree being integrated in their platforms. And if you look at the comments, if you look at the forums, if you look at Reddit, you see most people are basically doing this. That's right, most people seemingly don't want AI in their NAS, even though the majority of users, to a greater or lesser extent, do actually have AI integrated in their lives. Again, there will be a lot of users that will probably find that statement quite contentious, but really when it comes to the banking apps you use on your mobile phone, to the smart home devices, to a lot of the intelligent backend stuff of the websites we use, there is no avoiding that AI or LLM services are being integrated silently or aggressively in front of us across the myriad of platforms. So why is it so contentious when it comes to NAS? The obvious answer is security. Most users think, my data, my NAS, the last thing I want is some third party platform, some third party agent to have access to my data. And that makes a huge amount of sense. However, the reason brands are pursuing AI on their platforms isn't solely because of the fad, because of the buzzword. Depending on the brands you look at, they've actually got varying levels of integration with AI or lang large language model services. And some of those services are actually quite desirable. I think, I think it's fair to say that the number isn't low anymore. The number of users who use an AI engine or an AI chat LLM window of some sort in their lives rather than Googling or Yahooing or Ask Jeeving. Now, we've got these two brands here. Now, the reason I've got these on the table, despite the fact there are loads of brands I could have stuck here on the table today, um, is because they represent such polar opposites on the way they have approached AI utilization in NAS that pretty much every other brand you talk about is gonna be somewhere between their different integrations. And arguably, the way they have both entered into this is going to either piss you off or butter your toast. So Synology, the way they have gone about integrating um, AI assistance, and again, we're gonna throw around again, AI, LLM, that kind of stuff, and they all, Unfortunately, we are gonna be crossing wires a little bit on that one. The way they have integrated it is arguably in 2025, the worst way. We're not gonna talk about AI photo recognition. We're not gonna talk about AI surveillance integration because I would argue a lot of that is edge level stuff and not too harmful to your real important media, at least in terms of people intercepting confidential information. But recently, Synology rolled out integration of AI services into a lot of their collaboration suite, predominantly the mail application, uh, Mail Plus, and their office application, integrating into the word processing, uh, the spreadsheets, and PPTX, or PowerPoint presentations. There's a few other bits in between with the management there and the AI admin console in between. Now, we've done a whole video about it. I assume it's live by now. Um, but the thing that they've done is not roll in a local AI. You are not running the AI services local in the case of those integrated applications. You are using a third party AI. So again, Gemini, um, OpenAI, Ch ChatGPT, and a few others. You connect with your existing service with them uh, via an encrypted API key, and then when you use the AI services on your data, you are effectively creating a tunnel with those remote platforms to take advantage of those AI services, and then the answers come back lickety split, whether it is anal analysis of a document, uh, content generation predominantly on text-based forms at the time of recording, and analysis of information that you've got within spreadsheets, PowerPoint presentations, and refinement. However, I think most users that buy NAS would agree that this is seemingly not the way people want AI integrated into their NAS when they actually do want it. Again, I know that doesn't represent the bulk of users, but the ones that do want it, don't want it in that fashion. Because one, if they want to deploy a NAS, uh, if they want to deploy an AI alongside their data, they want it local. They want full fenced off, either complete isolation or complete and unwavering control of the AI from all directions. 
And on the Synology platform, as a platform that is predominantly focused on security, predominantly focused on the stability of their platform and being user-friendly, but more than anything else secure, it seems maddeningly contradictory that the way they would approach AI services is to create a tunnel to a third party external API. Again, there is controls, there's admin, there are declassification and um, uh, uh, provisos in place so that certain information such as passports, bank details and more, you can make sure none of that ever gets sent through to the remote LLM. But nonetheless, it seems completely contradictory to the Synology platform as a whole. But it's worse still, and I said this in the other video, that those that actually want AI that would use a remote LLM, a remote AI a large language model service for them to get the job done in terms of assistance, the way Synology have gone about it is it's so incredibly limited, the scope with which you can use it, that you probably end up better off using a remote access LLM anyway. So wherever way you go about it and the way they've pursued it, you're getting half the experience. Now, this brings us through to this thing at the bottom. Now, this is the Z Labs. It's gone through crowdfunding. We first saw it in September 2024, and I believe they're going to be at IFA 2025, by the way, with the Ultra Series. Don't worry, we are going to put the boot in, but we have to at least acknowledge that in the way most users who are prepared to integrate and interact with an AI on their NAS server, they've been the closest in the market so far to deliver it in the way people want it. So for a first thing, you download the AI model. You download the large language model from a myriad of different available LLMs. And depending on whether you go for the standard or the ultra model, you either download the model directly onto the NAS or the AI engine itself, in the case of the ultra, or in the case of the non-ultra series that's running on a rock chip eight core processor, with that one, you end up running on a client tool on your client device. Now they are rolling out a mobile app as well. I don't think that's going to allow for the download of the language model, but to say you've got a Windows environment or, you know, Ubuntu or something like that, you can download the model, you can keep it isolated, but that model then communicates with the NAS and you're still on your local area network. So you've got that level of fenced off um, uh, security and management. Now that local model does several things. Number one, it allows you to um, analyze data going into the system. It also allows you to get real-time reports and information about the information being uploaded into the system. Moreover from that, if you upload audio or video files, it rips um, text um, uh, transcription of audio and video media being uploaded onto it. And therefore, you have got more realistic searches and more accurate searches that integrate video and music media as well, as well as in the Ultra Series content generation, integration with third party LLM services, again, like image and stuff like that, that allow image creation as well as uh, AI photo recognition. That also allows for far more intelligent and bespoke image recognition as well as searches with things like semantic search and RAG or RAG that allows you to create much more intelligent results uh, to be achieved when searching through your data. Alongside that, the ability to use human language to create shared folders, to create areas of storage, to manage the system hardware, to create users or uh, rescind Avrin privileges in human language is appealing. And they're not fully established there, but they are heading that way. And there's gradually building towards it. We've seen their roadmap. Now, is it perfect? No. They're a brand that no one's heard of. They're a brand that have never been in the NAS market up to this point, and they're rocking out with a large scale now. So between these two, we have a NAS product here that's an established NAS platform with a huge reputation towards security and stability with, frankly, a very underwhelming and unpopular attitude and deployment of NAS. And we have another one that is seemingly creating the way people who are actually interested in AI in NAS being created. And it's just a shame that they've got absolutely no legacy, no history, and of course, of course, they are a brand based in China, which for some users are going to be a deal breaker. So we've already talked about a few of the ways which people want when they do are, are prepared to, to integrate AI in their NAS. What about what everyone else is doing? Well, QNAP is integrating the use of uh, third party powerful graphics cards being integrated into their systems to allow you to load and manage those AI models. Acer Store hasn't really done much, although it integrates with things like Docker and stuff like that. But the overall arching goal of AI integration into a NAS, and dare I say, AI integration in any sodding tool you use, is to make your life easier but not at the expense of security, not at the expense of stability, and not at the expense of the loss of your data or confidential information being outside of your control. Now, until that happens, 
no one really is going to want AI in their NAS in any meaningful business or day-to-day -day life capacity. They will just separate their confidential data here and their use of AI-assisted services there. If you want to see an alternate way of looking at this, look at users that aren't even in possession of a NAS in their home or business environment that are integrated fully into cloud services, you know, uh, Google Drive, AWS, name it, you know, Microsoft Azure, the works. Any of those cloud platforms have already started integrating the AI services. And as we can see, they've already decided, those users, that that platform is secure enough for their data in terms of stability, access, and management. So integrating the AI service there to them is not dissimilar to a local NAS user that wants to keep it all controlling in-house, having AI integrated. It's just a damn shame that the level of apps, features, services, and response time on the cloud side of things is so heavily improved upon better and a much more slick integrated user experience, because obviously we are talking about billion dollar companies, versus that of local AI deployments. They're closing it and they are integrating existing AI services to get the job done, downloaded LLMs, but still nonetheless, we have to at least acknowledge that AI on NAS, even the people that want it, isn't where it needs to be right now to compete with the alternatives in the market. What is it that people want? Nice and simple. People want the ability to be able to control an NAS with human language, to ask the system to do a thing with human language. They want to be able to ask the system to generate reports. By reports, I mean, if your system seems to be making a lot of noise, if your system seems to have the drives being accessed, to actually use an app with a little search window that goes, what's happening right now? Why is the system being noisy? Is someone accessing my system and giving you a human response? Having that kind of stuff, and given an AI would have access to the full logs, the full smart information, the full network logs, I think it is reasonable to say that a locally deployed AI, and I would argue even Synology integrating a third party one, they would have to give it an all manner of access to the logs, which would be madness. But nonetheless, both of these platforms and the ones in between have got the level of information available to a local LLM to answer those questions. And even if you could only use what's happening on my system as a you know suitably hard-coded uh, prompt, that still wouldn't be the end of the world. But for example, if I want to know more about a file, if I'm going through and I've got dozens of Word docs, isn't it going to be great to right-click and say, what is this file? And then the system just tell you it's an, a book by Stephen King. It is a report discussing finances from the year 22 to 23. That would be really useful. It's just a damn shame we don't have that yet. So circling back, do people actually want AI in their NAS? I think there is a percentage of people that do. And I do think there are brands who are pursuing this for the betterment of their platforms. We're just not there yet. And they're focusing way too much on things that people don't use right now and not really listening to what people actually want these systems to do. What do you guys think? Have you got an, an AI-assisted NAS? Have you purchased perhaps the ZLab? Did you go for that weird little AI pod thing, LCMD NAS system that's rolling out very soon? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you've got a question for the next raid room, bung it below in the comments. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.